Hi, it's Thomas. We're in the Peruvian Andes. It's the day before Christmas. All these guys are about to go beat the shit out of each other. It's called Takanakwe. Takanakwe is a giant mass brawl that happens every year at Christmas time in the Andes. The basic idea with Takanakwe is people build up their grievances all year in the village. Instead of getting fights, they save it. And on Christmas, everybody gets in a big fight, and that's it. It's like Yom Kippur, but bloodier. Takanaqui is exclusive to the Andean province of Chambavilcas. The province's capital, Santo Tomas, is a murderous 10-hour drive through the mountains from the nearest city. We've been driving for um, eight hours. The roads aren't uh, just the Autobahn. Altitude sickness is kind of combining with uh, your general car nausea in a fun way. A bit of car sickness and a sore ass, however, seemed a small price to pay to get to see an entire town fight itself. Chumbavilcas is sort of Peru's North Dakota. It's pretty, filled with Indians, and poor as the dirt they grow their potatoes out of. Most guys here split town when they hit 16 to work in the Andes' illegal gold mining industry, because it's pretty much that or chase sheep around a mountain. The indigenous population here claims descent from the Chanca people, who not only resisted the Spanish when they invaded, but the Incas before them. The area is cut off from the rest of the country. There's basically no police, no military presence, no government services, all of which plays into the local sense of defiance against authority. A lot of Chumbavilcans also speak the native Quechua language instead of Spanish, which doesn't help so much with the alienation. My name is uh, Victor Laime Mantilla. I'm uh, docente, I'm indígena. Y también participo en la lucha por reivindicar los derechos de los pueblos indígenas. Como verás en las ciudades, hasta ahora se sigue consiguiendo de que en Chumbivilcas todavía se practica una cultura de salvajes y nosotros no estamos de acuerdo. Lima es el que decide todo. O sea, lo que dice Lima, las provincias, las regiones tienen que hacer. Como si el Perú fuera todo un país uniforme when in Peru there are more than 42 cultures that have different ways to understand and see the reality of the world. I haven't been in a real fight since middle school, so I figured what better place to relearn the trade than a town so testosterone-charged they beat each other up for Christmas. We arrived a little before lunch to find festivities already in full swing. The lead-up to the Takanaqui fights is a week-long parade of drinking and dancing through the town streets. Oh, this, way. this is kind of the start of uh, Takanaqui. So what's happening right now is all these dudes in the chaps and like the animal things on their heads are fighters. There's a big procession right now through the town. They're like banging on doors. They're like come out and fight, basically. The real gist of it is just that like everybody's kind of coming together, playing some pretty boss-sounding music, and uh, pulling everyone out for the fight. Which I think is tomorrow morning. I'm either part of these guys' tribe now or they're all going to beat me up tomorrow. Yes, yes. The traditional Takanaqui music is an indigenous genre called Wailea. The lyrics mostly deal with rebelling against authority, and it's so devoid of any Latin or other Western influences, it sounds like Peking opera. <laughs> Wailea is played on an endless loop, much like American Christmas music, but doubly maddening because every Wailea song literally uses the same chorus. This is the same damn song! This is the same song! Ahí aparece esto del Wailea, y en el camino, en el proceso, se fusiona con el Takanagui. De las letras, siempre están relacionados con esto de la libertad, del enfrentamiento. Es animar psicológicamente al danzante. So we just got here this morning. None of us have slept. We're drinking a lot. The altitude sickness is overpowering. And we're dancing with a bunch of guys who look like things I've seen on DMT. <laughs> Wow. The costumes everyone wears fall into five basic characters. 
There's the Mohenyo, who wears traditional horse riding gear from the area. Then there's the Karawatana, who basically takes the Mohenyo and Mad Maxifies it with a biker jacket and huge leather cowboy chaps that look like Eon Flux boots. Then they put a dead bird or a deer skull up top. This looks pretty popular with the young guys. Who's, who's cap am I wearing? Then you've got the Negro, whose outfit's based not on Negroes, but rather the kind of guy who used to own Negroes. So he's a slave master, basically. <laughs> and finally, there's the Langosta, which means lobster in Spanish, but also locust. In the 1940s, Chumbavilcas had a plague of locusts, so the men naturally started dressing up as them to fight. And the next year, all the locusts left, so that pretty much sealed Langosta's place in the Takanakli pantheon. <laughs> Of course, you can always just go Caragallo, which means naked rooster, which means no costume, which basically means you're just drunk. The one thing everybody wears is the traditional Peruvian ski mask. This dates back to the days when Takanaqui was the one time a year you could beat up your boss or like the big town landowner. So disguising your identity was pretty key. The voice they're supposed to use to like fight people and challenge people is this high-pitched falsetto thing they're doing. There's nothing more terrifying than that. An angry, drunk dude in a ski mask, talking to you like Tweety Bird. As fight time grew near, the atmosphere in town started getting a little aggro. Esto del Takanaki sirve como un espacio de resolución de conflictos. Entonces mucha gente. Por cuestiones sentimentales, territoriales, de enemistad, de familia a familia o algo, lo resuelven ahí y algunos se miden también de manera pública así por deporte para decir oh, yo, soy, yo también soy hombre tú también After the third or fourth parade I ran into a couple mohenyos practicing for the next day's fights so I asked them for some tips on fighting Takanaki style Okay so what should I do Usted usted va a fingir peleando así Patea 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 Oh no no this one Patea así así Hay mucha gente dice, ¿no? ¿Por qué 25 un día de paz? Entonces ahí también hay una razón social, ¿no? O sea, precisamente resolver conflictos y también se resume el Takanaku como una forma de catarse social. Okay, it might be the alcohol speaking, but I think I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. You, you try to kick as much as you can, and then when you're in there, you just, you just pound as much stuff. I'm probably, uh, you know. I'm gonna get my face broken, but it'll be fine. Gracias, señor. In typical fashion, I left all my Takanaki shopping until the day before Christmas. Oh, here we go. So I had to hit the town quickly and put together an outfit that wouldn't mark me as a total gringo. I went for Mohenyo with a light splash of Karawatana. Is like a parrot? Horse and eagle. Give him a little horse and give him some eagle. Just kidding, I'm gonna on the ground for eagle. Got the guns. Got the uh, Toro. Pretty solid. This might be for kids. Everything okay? Those are good, right? Okay. I think it's it. I'm good. Alright. I'm ready to go fight. Fully outfitted for Christmas, I headed back to my hotel to rest up for the big day. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Um, last night we got in the firework fight in this hotel room with the uh, kid across the street whose parents own a firework store. So that was pretty dumb. Oh shit. Oh. That one. Oh. Haven't gotten too much rest. What the, oh fuck you kids. Damn it. Ah! <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Kids in Peru, man. Let me get ready to go watch some fights. Let's put on a jacket, ski mask. All right, ready for some Takanakwe. What do you think? Oh! God, that was rough. <laughs> the mood in Santo Tomas on Christmas morning is convivial and family friendly, especially in light of the violence everyone's on their way to watch and take part in. This is the Takanaku ring. Everybody in masks, you see, is here to fight or be fought. A lot of areas in the Peruvian and Bolivian Andes have similar fighting festivals to Takanaku. What distinguishes them from Takanaki, aside from obviously not falling on Christmas, is in Chumbavilcas the whole village takes part. Guys, girls, old drunk men, even little kids. The fights are intense but fairly orderly. 
punching and kicking is allowed, but there's no biting or hair pulling or hitting guys on the ground. There are also amateur officials in the ring who carry whips to make sure things don't get too one-sided or out of hand, and also to perform basic crowd control. This is a form That just got way out of hand, dude. He picked up a rock, went after the other guy. It's a little bit tense. Antes la justicia en Chumil que estaba administrada por gente de poder, la gente de las comunidades siempre perdían los juicios. Que voy a ganar en la justicia. Mejor acá yo hago justicia de manera pública. This is the uh, kiddie portion of the fight now. This guy looks like he's pushing six. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, yes. Oh. Does he that kid took a hard blow. Que ahora los pueblos están haciéndose escuchar. Es como que terminamos acá y quedamos ahora empecemos en paz. Pues por eso que el Takanaku empieza siempre con un abrazo y también termina con un abrazo. Es un papel importante que el Takanaku desempeña. I don't think I've ever been in a place where the idea of law seems kind of negligible. There's obviously something a little incongruous about watching children and old men pummel each other's faces to meet in the Christian world's traditional day of peace. At the same time, the second the fight's over, everybody's all hugs and beers, which I feel captures the true spirit of Christmas. At least better than getting drunk with relatives you don't particularly care for. Tomorrow there's another Takanaki in a village called Ilke. That's uh, sort of the real deal. And that's where the fights are a lot harder and where everybody here who has a grievance that they didn't solve in Takanaki goes to, to like really get it done. We're gonna go there. And I'm gonna fight some kid. Morning, it's the day after Christmas. Uh, we're in a van going to Yilke. This village is about 300 meters higher than San Patanas. You can tell you're in the Andes. We just passed like cliff sides that look like they're out of land of the lost. The origins of Takanaqui are a little nebulous. The festival's name derives from the reign of Tupac Amaru, the last Incan king to resist the Spanish conquest. But there's widespread debate as to when the practice actually started, and whether it has more to do with indigenous rebellion or with Spanish dueling traditions introduced under colonialism. We're just getting a leak. Um, festivities here have been kind of going on for a few days. Kids have been dancing, everybody's been drinking. It's a bit of a scene already. Hey, hey, what's up? Hey, Baza. Hey, what's the... Yeah, it's like, what, nine in the morning? There's like four or five beer bottles of those guys to eat. Everybody's dancing their way into the church. It's like a nice little church breakfast scene. It's kind of weird. And everybody's wearing like what look like double masks. But I guess uh, it says something to the uh, kind of fluidity of um, you know, religious thought of here. Up in Yike, the Wailea music was still fucking going. Y el Wailea tiene orígenes todavía en 1560 aproximadamente, en lo que se llama el gran movimiento ideológico y de resistencia cultural, que se llama el Taquiongo. Taquiongo, como decía, es la respuesta ideológica y cultural frente a la invasión española. Entonces ahí, en esta cuestión del Guayalía se expresaba también que también estamos nosotros los que vivimos y podemos hacernos sentir. The dancing up here is a little less uh, ornate down below, a little less bird-like, but that may be the result of them partying for like three days. 
Cuando uno escucha el Guailía, las gentes que bailan se transforman, se convierten en otra persona y al día siguiente estás como nuevo, como si hubieras nacido recién. After a few more drinks, it was finally time to head to the town center and watch the fights. This village has like 300 people in it, but on um, Takanakui Day, it grows to 3,000 because everybody comes in here because these are the guys who are the best fighters in the region. Which is cool because we want to see some great fights, but uh, not so hot for me because I have to fight one of them. In like a Roman Colosseum, replete with like dudes with whips. It was pretty clear from the get-go that Yike's reputation is well earned. Even the kids' fights here were a million times more intense than the ones in Santo Tomas. Ah! So someone was showing me how to wrap this until we got whipped by a guy. It was pretty rude. So this is the guy I'm fighting. He owns a pet eagle, has two girlfriends, and rides a motorcycle. He's also taller than me. And he has long hair. Not looking forward to this fucking fight. Jose was fighting a rival before me, which gave me the opportunity to see what I was up against, and hopefully get a little handicap courtesy of said rival. Starting to, starting to break out. Bowels just clenched, man. So I haven't, uh, haven't done any training for this. Uh, I don't think my opponent has either, but I'm pretty sure my opponent's life is training. You ready? Okay, this is it. <laughs> I may not have won the fight, or come anywhere close, or at any point look like I ever could have, but all the townspeople seemed pretty psyched to watch a gringo fight and lose, so at least I gave them that. Truthfully, as far as makeshift justice systems go, Takanakui's got a lot going for it, especially compared to our courts. Their turnover rate for cases is extraordinarily quick, the results are immediate and satisfying for the winners, and if you've got a problem with them, you can always go back in the ring for an appeal. The rest of Peru may look down on Takanakui as a symptom of rural backwardness, but while they're sitting in a lawyer's office filling out reams of paperwork, the plaintiffs of Chumbavilcas already have their arm around the defendant's shoulder and are drowning their problems in beer. Not a bad way to spend a Christmas. Still dancing. Hey! Hey!